All right, moving on to lesson 1.02, the endowment effect. So if you are taking this for honors, please continue watching this video. If you are not taking this class for honors, you get to skip this lesson and the assignment. So we already learned about the endowment effect in 1.01. We're just going to go into a little bit more detail. If you, rem if you remember, the endowment effect is part of a cognitive bias in which a person associates, associates more value to an item because they own it or can envision themselves owning it too, actually. So uh, you guys can read the part about the ticket. You know, you have that ticket. You want to sell it for more if you can't keep it. But let's look into how it works. And there's actually, if you click on this link, there's a pretty interesting study done <clears throat> about how just touching an item in a store makes us visualize and feel like we own it and increase the chances that we are going to buy the item. So let's get into the research here. Researchers placed two products in front of 231 undergraduate students at the University of Wisconsin. Half of them were told they can't touch the product. So they're, they're in different rooms, most likely. The other half were, um, were allowed to touch or play with the coffee mug and the slinky. Then after either not being allowed to touch it or being allowed to touch it, they asked all the students to express some sort of ownership. Do you feel like that slinky is yours? Do you feel like the slinky is not yours? How much money would you be willing to pay for that slinky? And what was maybe not surprising to them, but what they found was that the group of students who were allowed to touch the slinky and the coffee mug were willing to pay more for those products compared to the students who were not allowed to touch them. Then... What they did, so hold on, before we get to that, it, it does say that touching something, a product, gives you a little sense of control, okay? And it, again, a little bit increases the feeling that you own it. So then <clears throat> what they did is they were like, well, what if we have them visualize, um, imagine, visualize, touching the product and taking that product home. So for the group that was originally allowed to touch the items, didn't really change. However, for the group that wasn't allowed to touch the product and now had visualized touching it and taking it home, their valuation and their you know wanting to buy it increased. Okay, so again, you can go through all that. Uh, let's get into how companies use this endowment effect and, and how they exploit that to get more people to buy things. So guess what? Dressing rooms. If you try on clothes, you're touching them. You're visualizing yourself literally in the clothes. You're more likely to buy them. <clears throat> Jewelry stores and technology stores allow customers to try on the jewelry, to try holding the tablet or the phone. And then again, you're touching the product. You're seeing yourself with the product. You're more likely to buy that product. <clears throat> and then, I mean, I think we've all probably seen products like this. You get a free trial. You can try it before you buy it. You've got a week free trial of this. You've got a month free trial of that. And then once that trial is over, you pay the full price. Okay, so we've got three different things here. You've got the try it on and the clothing, the, you know, the dressing room. You've got the kind of trying it out in a store, which is very similar to trying it on, but it's just a different product. And then you have the try before you buy. So three really very similar techniques that companies use to exploit the endowment effect. What can you do to counter that effect? Before you go shopping, make a plan. Think about what you're going to the store for. Make a list and stick to it. 
Now I see things in the store that I was like, oh, I forgot to put that on my list. I just put it on my list for next time. It gives me a little bit more time to think about it. If I really don't need it, it's not like it's water or, you know, bread, like that's one thing. But if I go to the store to buy a running, running clothes or running shoes, and then I end up buying a dress, that's, that's different. I can put the dress on my list for next time. All right. Be careful about touching things. Don't touch the things in the store because the more you touch them, the more likely you are to feel like you own them and you're more likely you are to buy them. So make a plan, stick to the plan, keep your hands in your pockets. Don't touch things. The next thing you can do is think about how you're going to use that item. Is it really something you need or is it something you just really want? Okay. And that's why I kind of talked about putting the dress on my list for the next time I go shopping, because if it's really a need, I'll need that dress next week or next month still. But if it's a want, I may not want it again next week, you know, like out of sight, out of mind at that, if I'm dreaming about that dress, you know, I probably need it. But if I'm just, eh, it was all right. I ended up saving money because I didn't buy it that day. So really think about it. Will I die if I don't get this dress? Or am I going to a special event? Is this dress going to help me get a job? Or is this dress going to help me impress my boss for a promotion? You know, like just think about, it doesn't have to be a dress, but just think about, do I, is my current phone still doing everything I need it to do? Or is it no longer sending texts? Is it no longer receiving calls? Just think about that. Do you really need this new purchase? And we are good at convincing ourselves we need stuff when we want it. The other thing you can do is be careful about those memberships. How often are you really going to go to the gym? I know so many people that buy a gym membership and they go like twice for the whole year. It's a lot of money to spend to go two times. So think about your past behavior. If you're thinking about going to a gym, why don't you start working out at home first? There's so many things that you can do for free to get into the habit of working out and then build yourself up to something that's going to cost money like gym equipment or gym membership. All right. The last thing you can do to counter that endowment effect is be careful with free trials. Make a note of when you need to cancel the service and stick with it. I will often sign up for a free trial and I will cancel it an hour later or the next day because I don't want to forget that the free trial is going to end. Every single Now you want to double check and read the fine print, but every single time I've done that, the free trial continues for the seven days or the 30 days but then it cancels because I've already canceled it. So it just says, okay, you still have access to your free trial. Your access will end on such and such a date. However, if you're nervous about canceling right away, you can sign up for the free trial, set a reminder on your calendar that you need to cancel on the 29th day so that you don't get charged on day 30. Or whatever your trial is, make sure that you're canceling before, and it will be in the fine print. It will say, if you do not cancel by this date, on this date, you will be charged the full price. So read that fine print and cancel it if you're not going to use it, okay? They are expecting you, they are counting on you to forget to cancel. There are now services that you can pay for to find out what services you're paying for that you forgot you're paying for. So it is such a moneymaker for these companies. You really have to be careful. And a little organization, a little planning, you can avoid that. All right, so now we are on your first written assignment for the honors. You're going to choose one of the scenarios below and read it carefully and review your notes. And these are all fictitious companies but they're kind of emphasizing how they take advantage of that endowment effect. You can go to the pace chart and open up the template, which gives you the structure of your paragraphs. And then you can go to file, make a copy, and you can start typing your essay here. All right, so going back, you can read about the streaming trial. 
You can read about the try it before you buy it, or you can read about upgrading your service. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is describe the marketing strategy used by the company and how they're taking advantage of the endowment effect. Remember, we had three marketing strategies. We had the try it on, we had the try it out, and we had the try it before you buy it. Then you also want to explain how those strategies influence the consumer. Step two, you want to describe the error in the customer's thinking. What, what's the mistake that they're making? And explain how those errors in thinking are affecting the consumer. So if you're the shopper, if you're the consumer, what mistakes am I thinking of or making and how do those mistakes affect me? The last paragraph, describe the actions you can take to mitigate the thinking errors. Remember these actions right here. How can we counter the endowment effect? There's three steps right there that you can do. And then explain how those strategies and actions limit the influence of the endowment effect. All right, don't forget to check out the rubric that will tell you how I have to grade this assignment. All right, this is what I have to follow. So as you read these, you've got a paragraph on explaining how it's at work, explaining why it's cognitive bias and devising a plan. All righty, good luck and have a fantastic day.